This is the pre-show for the Wright Patterson Mahjong Nitty Gritty Let's Play live stream. We have about three minutes before the top of the hour, which is when we go live. So I'm just testing. Thank you for coming to the live stream. I see we have two people watching. This is the pre-show. We have three minutes. Thanks for coming to the live stream. We'll get started in about three minutes. I'm going to go freshen my drink. I'll be back in just a minute. back welcome to the live stream we're going to be going live in two minutes can you guys hear me okay hi peg welcome a new way to play that's right gotta fix my drink we have two minutes before we go live so we'll do a intro in a just a minute if you're just joining us tonight is the restart let's play live stream for Wright Patterson Mahjong. We're gonna get into the nitty gritty of this version. All right, I'm ready. One minute to go live. One minute to live, one minute to live. Hi Peggy, welcome. Hi Susan, welcome to the live stream. Just so you know, this is the Wright Patterson Mahjong. Nitty gritty, let's play live stream. We'll be live in one minute. This is a members only chat to keep away the trolls. If you wanna participate in chat, please consider becoming a member. Just click join You'll see it around the subscribe button. You might have to subscribe first if you haven't subscribed. And then click join. And it's $4.99 a month. That money goes to support the channel. So that more and more Mahjong players can get to know how to love the game even more. Hi Elaine, welcome. This, uh, this version is about to go on Mahjong time. That's why I'm restarting. We'll get into that in just a few minutes. Hi, J.O. All right, we're going to get started. Hi, Kathleen. Welcome. We're at the top of the hour, so we're going to go ahead and get started. And people can just join in, and the, there'll be a repost available for anybody who misses anything. So let's get going. In this nitty-gritty Let's Play live stream, we're going to be talking about Wright-Patterson Mahjong. Wright Patterson Mahjong is known as the military version, and we'll share about what that means. So this is just a, it's not a new way to play. It's been around for many years, so it's not well known, and again, we'll talk about that a little bit. Before we get into the presentation, though, I just want to give a quick shout out to our moderators. They are the ones with their name in blue, with a wrench by their name. If you look in chat, you'll see them. I just want to say thank you so much for helping moderate chat. Please keep an eye on any questions that come up and we'll try to circle back and answer them as we go along. We're gonna start with a presentation. I'm gonna kind of breeze through it, but there is a handout that has all this information in it. So look in the video description below, click the link there so that you can download the handout to review later. And then also this is going to be reposted after we're done and then you'll be able to watch it again to go over anything that maybe was confusing or that you missed later. So with that, let's switch to the presentation unless anybody has any questions. Please put it in, in chat and may, put any question that you have, write it in caps and that way the moderators will be able to find 
any questions and we'll try not to miss any of those. If you are not able to chat because you're not a member, fear not, you can write any uh, questions in the comment section below the video later or you can always send me an email or comment on Facebook and we'll talk a little more about that as well later. So with that we'll go ahead and switch to the presentation. Uh, I'm going to put my email address in chat real quick. It's also in the video description below so you can get a hold of me just by sending me an email and looking at all the information in the video description. Here we go. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, there's a little bit of a delay, so we're gonna wait until YouTube catches up with my home screen. Okay, there we go. So this is an introduction to Wright-Patterson Mahjong. I'm going to go through it quickly though so that we can get to the let's play and you can see a demonstration of the game at Mahjong time. This is what we're going to cover in this presentation. It's going to be a lot so buckle up. You might want to quickly get a drink or a snack or something so that you can hunker down and just take everything in. We're going to talk about the origins very briefly. We're going to look at the tiles, the blocks, which are the components of a hand. We're going to look at examples of hands. We're not going to look at all of them because there's, I think, 96. <laughs> we don't have time to look at all of them. There are 92, 92 hands. So we're going to look at uh, one from each category to give you a little bit of an idea of what the category is about. Then we're going to talk about very briefly how to play the game. And then I'm going to share a demonstration where we're going to play at Mahjong time. And I'll explain that as well. And then I'll share some resources for you so that you can dig deeper after this event. So before we get going on the origins, I just want to see if there's any questions so far. Any questions? Hi, June. Welcome. Hi, Evelyn. Thanks for coming. We're going to talk about Wright-Patterson Mahjong. If there's no questions, here we go. So Mahjong originated in China, the Yangtze River Delta in the 1850s. As far as my research has shown, the earliest archaeological evidence is from the 1880s. And correct me if I'm wrong, we do have a collector in our midst, Kathleen, um, do you know of an earlier date than 1880 for an actual Mahjong set that was going around? I know that the game originally uh, came from a card game called Hanging Horse. There are a lot of similarities with the designs on the cards that made it into the tiles in Mahjong when it very first came out. It's a fascinating history, and I will provide a link to where you can dig deeper in the history of the game from China. It's fascinating. So at, after it was born in China, it moved its way across Asia and into Europe. And as it was moving around in there, there was a, an American businessman named Joseph Babcock who was traveling in China and he found out about the game. He learned how to play and he thought Americans would be fascinated by it. So he decided to have the rules simplified into the Red Book, which is what we're looking at here. This is the Red Book, Joseph Babcock's Book of Rules that were simplified. It's not the original game. It's been simplified and westernized. And so he imported it to New York the tiles were, were manufactured and sent to New York, and that's where the game was introduced. So in the 20s, or really more 30s, um, the, some ladies in New York created the National Mahjong League after noticing that there were people playing in many different ways, probably the original Chinese version and then Babcock rules. And they decided that they would sort of standardize the rules for their synagogue. And that's 
the birth of the National Mahjong League. But at about the same time, in the 20s, some people, military dependents in Ohio, created their own hands. This, this game was a fad in these days, and people were just uh, really into it, and they kind of made it their own. And that's where the Wright-Patterson rules came from. When the ladies or the military dependents at the time created hands, it was called McCook Field, and that's where it all originated for Wright-Patterson Mahjong. Later, McCook Field became Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and that's when they started actually publishing the rules in this green book. And the green book is known as the rule set for Wright-Patterson Mahjong. The first publication of this book is 1963, but there were hands being played and develop, the game was being developed since the 20s. So it was, as far as my understanding, being developed at the same time as the hands and the method of American Mahjong by the National Mahjong League was being developed. They were concurrent. So their counterparts, I guess you could say. So Wright-Patterson Mahjong since 1963 has been continually printing these booklets and it's played primarily, well here, let me go to the next screen. So let me catch up here. I kind of was going ahead here. So Wright-Patterson Mahjong, shorten WPMJ is the acronym. We know military people love acronyms. It was created in the early 20s by the military dependents at McCook Field. The base was renamed to honor the Wright brothers, which is where Wright-Patterson Mahjong or Wright-Patterson Air Force Base came from. The game has elements of the National Mahjong League and Chinese versions, so it's kind of a blend, which is, I think, kind of nice. And it's a great middle ground, so people who know how to play Asian versions might find some comfortability playing Wright-Patterson Mahjong, and that also applies to people who are playing the National Mahjong League style game. They may have a little bit of a learning curve, but they'll feel comfortable with some of the components of the Wright-Patterson Mahjong game because there are shared elements and we'll get into that. Wright-Patterson Mahjong is typically played by military dependents so many people have not heard of this version. It's also known as military rules or Air Force rules but it's played by people outside of the military both dependents and just in regular lifestyles. It's just kind of a word of mouth has traveled and some people who don't have anything to do with the military play the game. So it's found its way into secular America, I guess you could say. Um, let's see. Evelyn said that uh, the Wright brothers had a bicycle shop in or near Dayton, Ohio. Yep, that's where McCook Field was. Um, oh, so anyhow, and they basically, um, McCook Field was an aviation uh, experimentation site. And so to give an ode to the Wright brothers, they renamed McCook Field to Wright Patterson. I'm not sure where the Patterson part comes out. So if anybody knows where the Patterson part comes in, let me know. All right. Uh, this game is equally challenging, as equally challenging to learn as the National Mahjong League rules, and it is well worth the effort. It's a complex game, though, so please be patient with yourself as you learn how to play this game. Typically, if you already know how to play one version, the learning curve is shorter. So if you already know how to play by National Mahjong League rules, your learning curve will be shorter uh, compared to someone who doesn't know how to play at all. But we're going to cover it all regardless tonight. The rules and hands are published in the booklet about every six years, five to six years, with minimal changes. Typically, at least up until this last publish, they would retire about six hands and they would add six new hands. Sometimes they were brand new. Sometimes the hands are from previous publishes. So you basically have this new book, which came out just last year, 
you'll have about five years to play with it. So you've got lots of time to learn how to play throughout the book and get comfortable with it. And then with the next publish, you don't have to learn the whole thing all over again. You only have to learn a handful or so hands. This year, there seem to be many more new hands or, or recurring hands. And in the booklet, they're gonna be shown with an asterisk so you can see which ones are different uh, and which ones were carried over from the previous year. So if you already have your green book, look for that asterisk and that will tell you that that particular hand is new to this publish. All right, here we go. We're gonna talk about the tiles first. These are the parts of the game, kind of like a deck of cards. Just like with a deck of cards, you've got uh, diamonds, clubs, spades, and diamonds, clubs, spades, and hearts. Well, you've got a similar set of, I guess, objects you might call them, because in Mahjong it's a tile. So there are similar concepts here. We have three suits that are numbered one to nine, and there are four of each. We have the dot suit, numbered one through nine. We have the bamboo suit, numbered one through nine. And we call these BAMs for short, B-A-M-S, BAM, BAMs. So dots, BAMs, and then we have characters. For short, these are called cracks. And in the Wright Patterson book, the short or the abbreviated name is C R A C K. Sometimes you'll see it spelled out as characters, but I think sometimes it's also spelled cracks. Let me just make sure here. I've, I see characters in here, but I thought somewhere I saw cracks spelled C-R-A-K-S. So if you are looking through here and you see descriptions where you see cracks, you'll know what that means. That's the character suit. Let's see, I thought I saw that somewhere, but anyhow, we'll move on here. Let me see, now I'm obsessing. Um, all right, we're going to move on. Characters primarily the way that's written, but you're also going to see bamboo or bam and dots. So these are the number tiles. There are four of all of each of them, just like in a deck of cards. We also have dragons. We have the white dragon, which corresponds to the dot suit. We have the green dragon, which corresponds to the bamboo suit. And then we have the red dragon, which corresponds to the crack suit or the character suit. And if you want to have kind of a, some kind of a connection in your mind as to which goes with which, if you think about the white dragon, it's white like a pearl and a pearl is round like a dot. So the white dragon goes with dots. The green dragon is green and so are bamboo sticks. So the green dragon goes with the bamboo suit. For the, the red dragon, you can see the symbol, the Chinese symbol, the, the kanji, it is in red. And that stands for, I think it's 10,000. So that kanji, a myriad is what it's called, Rep, er, links to the red dragon. So just remember with the cracks and all that red that you see there, that goes with the red dragon. So these are the corresponding dragon to the suits. All right, anybody have any questions at the moment? Yep, there it is. Thank you, Kathleen. Cracks, I knew it was in there somewhere. Thank you so much for that. Okay, now we have winds, north, east, west, and south. You will see them in different orders though, and we're gonna talk about that later, but there's four of each of these, just like the other tiles. These are um, all the different tiles that you're gonna be playing with, but there are other tiles, flowers. These are bonus tiles. They are not played in your hand. And this is one of the big differences between the National Mahjong League rules and Wright-Patterson rules. 
Flowers are not part of your hand. They're bonus tiles. So if you have a flower in your hand, you won't be able to win. You need to expose it and get a replacement tile. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Before we do that though, I want to explain that you get extra score if you have the right tile in these flowers. You see the numbers, one, two, three, four, in two types. We have seasons, which are the ones with spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And then we have see, uh, flowers. So the ones without the letters, those are the flowers. One, two, three, four flowers. And then the ones with spring, summer, otter, autumn, winter, those are seasons. So there's two sets of flowers and they're numbered one through four. The winds correspond to the flowers. East is number one, south is number two, west is number three, north is number four. So if you are east, the dealer, and you get a number one flower, you're gonna get extra points for that flower. If you are east and you get a number two, you may or may not get score for that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Just remember that the seats that you're sitting in correspond to the wind and to the numbers on the flowers. East is one, south is two, west is three, north is four. And you can remember that by saying, eat soup with nuts, east, south, west, north. So if you're sitting next to east, you're soup or south. Next to south is west, eat soup with, and then nuts. Nuts is number four, player number four. North is nuts. All right, we're gonna keep going. Tiles two through nine are called simples. Simples, two through, oh, oops, two through eight. Oh no, I have a boo-boo. Okay, so it's two through eight, not the nines. So I need to fix that. So if you're watching the repost, this is incorrect. It's two through eight. Simples are two through eight. Actually, you know what? Let me fix that really quick. I'm just gonna quickly do that right now. Don't mind the man behind the curtain. Ignore the man behind the curtain. There, it's fixed. But now this is not centered. There we go, get my OCD in order there. Okay, we're gonna do from the current slide and now we're going to swap. Okay, everybody with me now? We've got the correction here. So two through eight are simples. And hopefully that little boo-boo there will help you remember that two through eight are simples, not nines, because nines are part of terminals, which are ones and nines. Ones and nines begin and end a sequence, and that's why they're called terminals. Ones and nines are terminals. Honors all also include the winds and the dragons. So these are more valuable tiles. They're used in higher point hands, typically. So, and also for score later, which we're gonna talk about in a bit, you could get higher score for having honors, which includes terminals in some cases. Uh, yes, Marcia, all these, this will be, there's a link in the video description, but I need to update it because I had an error. Oh, here's it, here it is again. I need to update this one too, because the simples does not include um, nines. So let me fix that really quick. Okay, so now we're going to go back. Um, after the video, we are going, I, I will update the link below the video description, okay? So we have simples <clears throat> two through eight, and then we have terminals, winds, and dragons, which are honors. So we have simples and honors, and that's gonna make sense later when we get to the hand descriptions. Okay, those are all the tiles that you're gonna work with. Remember, flowers are not part of your hand, they're bonus tiles. All right, now we're gonna talk about the blocks. And these are the components of your hand. You're gonna have singles sometimes, and there are some examples here. Some hands will call for one, five, seven, nine, or maybe two, four, six, eight, singles. You could also maybe have a hand with news, 
N-E-W-S. And that's going to give you some fam familiarity if you already play by the National Mahjong League rules because they have hands that have news as well. So these are single tiles. And incidentally, I don't know if you noticed, but there are no jokers. No jokers with Wright-Patterson Mahjong. And uh, we can talk about that later, I think. It, uh, Edna. Hi, Edna. Um, you're asking it's available to play on Mahjong time. Not technically, but I have a way for you to practice. Um, it's a little bit modified, but we're going to talk about it in a little bit. There is a way that you can practice um, a version of the game. And we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. So here's another component that you're going to be using, a pair. And that would just be two identical tiles. That is a pair. So a three dot and a three crack, that is not a pair. Those are like numbers, but it's not a pair. They have to be identical to be a pair. You also have something called a pung, P-U-N-G, pung, like lung. It rhymes with lung, pung, lung, lung, pung. Okay, pung, three of a kind. Then we have a kong. This is four of a kind, identical tiles. We also have chows. This is where the Asian element comes in. A chow is three in a sequence, not four, not five. It's three in a sequence. That would be a chow. However, there are some hands that have long sequences or big sequences. Sometimes you're going to have a short sequence. And this is an example of a short sequence called a chow, three in a sequence, one, two, three. In Wright Patterson Mahjong, you can have a chow in mixed suits. That's called a mixed chow, one, two, three. At the bottom, you see a bam, a dot, and a crack. And it's very specific and it will be described in the hand description. So we have it at the top, one, two, three in dots, one, two, three in bams, one, two, three in cracks, and a one, two, three in mixed suits. So those are some examples, and it could be any three consecutive numbers. So you could do four, five, six, or seven, eight, nine. Any three consecutive numbers. Peg's saying, because terminals are in one, three, five, seven, nine, is it worth more? Not in that case, because they're singles. You don't get any score for singles. You get score for pungs and kongs. Chows and single tiles do not give you any value. So the ones and nines would have to be pungs or kongs to give you value. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, now we're gonna talk about some of the hands if, unless anyone has any more questions. This is the Wright Patterson book. It's called a green book, um, but there are other books that you can get and we'll talk about that much later. But this booklet has how you play the game it has valid hands by category, which is a similarity with the National Mahjong League. All the hands are divided by category, so you can kind of compartmentalize the hands in your head so you know where to go when you're looking for a hand to play. And it also has how to score, how to score. So this booklet, I highly recommend every player have their own book. A lot of people like to make notes in their booklet. I've already written in mine, uh, and incidentally, there are errors in here. So on the Wright Patterson Mahjong page, there is a section on that page where you can see the corrections and the clarifications. So know that the book has some uh, anomalies in it. Uh, last one is not same suit. That's correct. It was mixed suits. One, two, three. It's called a mixed chow. Mixed chow. And we'll, we'll look at what hand that belongs to shortly. It's, it's really um, just a handful of, of, tile, of hands, I think. So uh, we'll look deeper in a, in a bit. Okay, so let's now talk about quickly how to play. And I'm going to assume that many of you know how to play Wright-Patterson Mahjong. 
I mean, um, National Mahjong League. If anybody in the chat already knows how to play Wright Patterson Mahjong, write WPMJ in chat. WPMJ, if you already know how to play. Uh, and that way it'll give me a little indicator. If you are just watching, just hang tight. If you already know how to, to play the game, just hang with me. I want to just briefly go over how to set up the game. We're going to breeze right through this. And incidentally, all these instructions are in that green book. So try not to feel overwhelmed. Uh, I just want everyone to know that there is setup involved. So when you get your tiles out on the table, you're going to have 144. There's no jokers. So that's why it's fewer tiles than the um, American Mahjong with National Mahjong League rules. They play with 152 tiles with all those jokers. Uh, okay, so Jingles, you have an old book, which is fine, but the new book was published in 2022. So if you want to play with the new book, you'll need to get a, an update. Okay, so you mix all the tiles and then each player builds their walls in front of them. 18 wide, 2 high. East will roll the dice to determine which wall is going to be broken. So they count, after they roll the dice, they, they count the number of seats, whatever the number on the dice is. If they roll, um, let's say, double threes, that's going to be six. So they'll start with themselves and they'll count around four. So they'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. So south is pre is where the wall is going to be broken. That player or that wall is going to become what's called prevailing wind. That is where the wall is broken and where the flower wall is set up. So um, that player is then going to take the dice and they're going to roll it and add the number they roll to whatever East rolled, and that will indicate where to break the wall. There are some complexities here that we're not gonna go into. One of them is what happens if you roll a high number that takes you into another player's rack or wall. And that's a little bit complex of how to arrange the tiles for the flower wall. This flower wall is seven tiles from the break to the left. And it's pushed out in a like a 45 degree angle and the tiles are staggered so that it's differentiated from the rest of the wall. And that is where you get replacements replacement tiles when you draw a flower. Or if you have a con, because you play with 13 tiles, 14 tiles makes your winning tile. If you have a con, you're gonna have an extra tile in there, so you have to get what's called a replacement tile. And so you'll draw that when you have a Kong, and hopefully we'll have an opportunity to show all that. So that's what happens when you uh, break the wall, you um, open it up so that you can deal the tiles and a flower wall is created uh, so that you can get replacement tiles for the flowers and also replacement tiles for the Kong. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about where you can buy the card shortly, okay? You can get it at the Wright-Patterson website, but I'm going to give you that in a little bit. Okay, so after the wall is created, then East is going to take the first four tiles. And this is just like any other way to play the game. Each player takes four tiles until everybody has 12. And you just put them in front of your rack, and then East will take the top one and top third for their one and three, and then everybody else takes one. So East has 14 tiles, everybody else has 13. Then, oh yeah, I just said that, okay. Um, so we're caught up. Okay, now after everybody gets their tiles and you look at them, you may have flowers. You expose them immediately and you put them on top of your rack. East, incidentally, will have the dice on their rack, and the dice will be showing the player, the number for the player who broke the wall. So in this case, I said six, so that would be the player on the right of East. So threes would be up on the dice uh, on East rack. So you can also see who is prevailing, the prevailing win based on the number on the dice, but it's also whoever has the flower wall in front of them. Um, so East 
if East has flowers, they pick first. So let's say I have two, I would go to the flower wall and take the top two. And we'll talk more about that another time. It's a little complex and more visual, but I'll, I have a video on how to do all that. And so I'll make sure there's a link so that you can quickly see the demonstration of how to set up the table in a live setting. So East takes their flowers, uh, replacement tiles, and then in order, or counterclockwise, the other players do as well. And you may or may not have a flower, and just don't feel bad about that. There's only eight. Okay, so, oh, okay, thank you, Peg. All right, so now, I, I like to explain that Mahjong, American Mahjong, is a three-phase game. The first phase of the game is the deal and the Charleston the deal and the Charleston. The second phase of the game is picking and discarding. The third phase of the game is scoring. And American Mahjong with National Mahjong League rules has those three phases. For Wright Patterson Mahjong, we do have a Charleston. You go right, across, and left. On that left, you have an option to pass up to three tiles blind and then the Charleston is done. There's just one set of passes, right across left, and then you're done. It will give you opportunities to improve your dealt hand. So you could receive up to nine tiles that are gonna hopefully exponentially improve your starting position going into the next phase of the game where you pick and discard one tile at a time. Okay, so now, Phase two, East discards to start the pick and discard phase of the game. Turns go counterclockwise order. Walls are pushed out in this in clockwise order. That's the only part of the game that goes in clockwise order, the walls going out. But the turns are counterclockwise, okay? Oh, <laughs> thank you, Sue. Okay, there is no order to the discards out on the table. You just discard randomly. So you don't put them in a line. There's no box of tiles in front of you or anything like that. You just discard and wherever it hits, it hits. And then they get pushed around when you push out the walls. So there's no order to the discards. Discards can be claimed to complete a block of three identical tiles or more, or it could also be a chow. So you can do a chow, a pung or con, depending on what hand you're playing. Some hands are fully concealed, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So depending on the kind of hand you're playing, you want to be careful to check as to whether or not you can claim a discard to help you complete your hand. That's why there's a little comment there that says tiles from the hand must be exposed with the discard. So if you claim a discard, you've got to expose tiles from your hand to make either a chow, a pung, or a kong. And incidentally, with a chow, you can only claim that tile from the player on your left. A pung and kong, or mahjong for that matter, can be claimed from any player. Any questions? When discards are, cl are claimed, turns may be skipped. So there's no backsies, turns may be skipped. The first player to complete a hand wins the game. The winner is paid right away. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Then you go on to phase three where the other players score their hands. This is one of the unique things about Wright Patterson Mahjong. Everybody gets paid except the person at the bottom. They're the ones who have to pay out to everybody. So there is a loser. Well, we don't wanna, I wonder if there's, I don't know if there's another name. That's kind of harsh. But anyway, the players who do not Mahjong score their hand. So you may get payment for your effort when playing Wright Patterson Mahjong. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. I wanna look at just some of the hands to give you an idea of the categories on the car in the booklet. This is an example of one of the pair hands. It's called doublets. It's seven 
unique pair. But in Wright Patterson Mahjong, your pairs in pair hands can be Kongs, but they're held in your hand. So if you have four of a kind, you don't want to declare it. You keep it in your hand and they can be used as pairs. And this only applies to pair hands or if it's noted in the description of the hand in the booklet. So this is an example of doublets. We also have sequences. This is an example of a big sequence, one through nine, but you can see it's made up of three chows, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine, with news and one wind paired. That's news lineup. And I don't know if you've noticed a pattern here, but every hand has a name. It also has a number. So if you're looking at the book and you, you ask someone, well, what hand is that? They'll be able to give you a number if you don't know where news lineup is. The next category is novelty. These will be eras, holidays, significant periods of time, and sometimes dates. So here we have the Roaring Twenties. We have three pungs, one in each suit, a pung of white dragons and a pair of west winds. That's Roaring Twenties. They were probably inspired by the National Mahjong League card. My, that's my guess anyway. So that would be the novelty hands, eras, holidays, significant periods and dates. We also have jewel hands. These are hands divided in either two, three, four, six, eight, or three, four, five, seven, nine, with dragons that correspond. They also have the callable chows. These are the hands where you can claim the discard from the player on your left if you're playing a jewel hand. Let's say I'm playing the two, three, four, and they throw a three bam. If the player to my left discards that three bam, I can say chow and take that tile and expose my 2-4, and that'll help me complete my hand. But immediately, everyone's gonna know what you're playing, probably. So this is called Jade, and there are other hands similar to this in the different suits with the corresponding dragons. So that would be the jewel hand, two, three, four, six, eight in this case, and it's any combination of these tiles. We also have something called a gate hand. Gates are where you have the end of a sequence or the end of a set of tiles using simples bracketed by pungs. In this case, we have one suit. This is called heavenly gates, where we have a pung of ones and a pung of nines with a sequence of two through eight and any simple paired. That's the way that particular hands will read. So you have one, 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 end or nine, nine, nine with simples and winds or dragons to kind of complete the hand. And we're gonna do deep dives into the different categories later this month. Each week we'll look at the different categories and dig deeper into the hands. All right, so uh, Heavenly Gates. Oh, and incidentally, someone had asked, I think maybe it was Kathleen if one's one, three, five, seven, nine singles give you score? The answer was no, but here you would get score. If you don't mahjong, you would get to score your ones and nines and you would get value there. So this is a higher point hand. You could see already that it's probably gonna be harder than, than that pair hand uh, that you saw earlier. All right, next we have number tiles. These are with simples and winds and dragons, different combinations of them. No ones and nines are in the numbers category. No ones or nines. You can only use two through eight for your tiles. This is a hand called Wally. The reason it's called Wally is because we're using west and white. That's Wally. The, each wind has a different hand. So Wally is West and White, and we have three different numbers punged in different suits. It just has to be a different number. As long as it's between two through eight, it could be any number, but there has to be one of those numbers punged that's different. Uh, every hand is exactly as printed, no optional number or suit. Um, you do have some flexibility sometimes. 
and we'll talk about that when we do the deep dives. Um, so like in this case, it just says three in three suits, three number tiles punged, uh, three unique number tiles punged in three suits, but you get to decide which suit to use. So there's flexibility there. Um, okay. Next we have mixed suits. This is the heavenly hopscotch hand that was kind of, you got a bit of a sneak peek when we talked about singles. We have one, three, five, seven, nine, and two suits, two, four, six, eight, and a third suit. So you get to choose which suit it is. Like the, the BAMs could be the one, three, five, seven, nine. As long as all three suits are represented, you get to make that choice as to which one goes where. But you have to have two in one, three, five, seven, nine, and one with a two, four, six, eight. You get to choose which suit it's gonna be. But typically, you're gonna have evens, odds on one page, and then small sequences on the other side. So the mixed suit pages, there's two of them. One will be evens and odds, and then the other one will be small sequences. And we'll deep dive into those later. Yep, this is very, people who play MCR would be very comfortable probably with Wright Patterson Mahjong because there are similarities. Okay, then we have honors. These are the more, the higher value hands because they're all using ones, nines, wins, and dragons. This is an example with honors, all honors. We've got terminals, wins, and dragons. This is called angels. Incidentally, this particular hand is played in Asian versions, like Hong Kong Mahjong uses this. So does um, Ricci Mahjong and Ma Mahjong competition rules. They all have this hand, but it's called 13 Orphans, not Angels. We call it Angels. In other versions, it's called 13 Orphans. In this category, you're going to have Terminals, Wins, and Dragons. No simples. No simples at all. Terminals, Wins, and Dragons. The last category is unique to this publish. It's a brand new category called Chinese tea hands, Chinese teas. These are half flush where you have one suit with wins and dragons. That's called a half flush. Incidentally, a full flush is all one suit. So this would be a half flush. We have bams, wins and dragons. So any combination of honors makes this a half flush. So all the hands are half flush, one suit with wins or dragons, different combinations. And the hands are gonna be either evens or odds. And this is the example with evens. Lemongrass is the name, and it's pungs of even numbers, two, four, six, or eight, with a pung of green dragons and a pair of south winds, and it's specific. And it will be described that way in the book. So those are the categories and the different hands that you can expect to see with the primary pattern for each one of these categories. So I, I hope you find that helpful. I hope it's not too overwhelming. You will get used to it. If you're brand new to the game, most instructors recommend that you stick to pairs and sequences to start until you're comfortable finding your way in and out of different hands based on what is building while you're picking and discarding tiles. So if you're brand new, start with pairs and sequences and that's what we're gonna do tonight. We're gonna start with pairs and sequences probably. Okay, now we're gonna briefly talk about scoring. I want you to take a nice deep breath, okay? Everybody, nice deep cleansing of breath, okay? Do it with me in and out okay nice deep cleansing breath in and out because this is going to get heavy okay try not to feel too overwhelmed it's going to be overwhelming though i'm just going to prepare you but you've got it all written in the book and the, the, it's very well explained so just kind of drink it in and then we're going to cover scoring later when we do live streams later this month and we're gonna score winning hands together so that you can learn it at a slower pace. But we're gonna use the example in the book and I'll show you what it's gonna look like just so you know what to expect because it is part of the game. 
So here we go. Phase three, scoring. When you get your Mahjong set, you're going to have chips or coins. These are coins I personally like. They're metal of some kind, uh, some cheap alloy, but they clink, and so I like them. I, these are, are can be purchased, purchased at Yellow Mountain Imports. You have to buy two sets to get enough of the coins, though. And the value of the coins, the denominations, are listed in the book, and that's what you see here. Um, this is going to total $1. So when you play Wright-Patterson Mahjong, you buy a rack for a dollar, and if you lose your chips, you gotta go out there and pay another dollar to get another rack with more chips. So um, the, the loss limit is low. It looks high just because of the way the value is set up. And we'll, we'll talk through it a little bit as we go. Okay, this is the base score. So when you first look at your hand, you're gonna look at the different components and you're also, hold on. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> you're going to look at whether they're simples, whether there's ones and nines, the honors, which are higher value. You're also going to figure out whether they're exposed on the rack or concealed, because those are going to give you a higher value. If you have concealed pungs, and Kongs, you're gonna get higher value for those. So this is what the base scoring looks like. So when you win, you are going, you're going to be paid based on single, double, or triple limit, which is basically yellow and white chips, the highest ones. Uh, and we'll talk about that another time. But when you lose, if you are not the winner, the one who says Mahjong, you're going to score your, your hand. So you get paid for your effort. So after you get your base score, you're also going to look at ways to double your score. And it will take the value of your hand up exponentially. You get one, two, and three doubles depending on those components of your hand and whether they're concealed or exposed. The more concealed you are, the higher value your hand, typically, if it includes pungs. So we'll do an example so you can see. And then once you get the doubles, you're going to find out what your payout is, and that's what this page is for. So if you look at the back of your book, if you happen to have one, on page 29 is this page. Then 30 is the doubles page. Uh, I'm sorry, where your doubles are, and then the payout page is where your points translate to the doubles, and you use the matrix to figure out what your hand value is. So we're just going to look at a quick example, and then we're going to play Mahjong, okay? Everybody with me? Does everyone need to do another deep breath? I'll let you decide yourself. If you need a cleansing breath, please do it right now, and we'll move on. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so here's a hand, okay? We have a dragon hand. Uh, let's see. I don't even know what hand this is. Let's see. Well, it really doesn't matter what hand it is. Well, no, it kind of does um, because if it is a... Let me see here. Um... If you're ready to win, it matters what hand it is. But if you're not ready to win, it doesn't. So you would have to be ready to win in order to leverage which hand it is. Because each hand is either single limit, double limit, or triple limit. And you get different doubles based on what limit it is. So I don't remember what this one is, but we'll just trudge through, okay? All right. You need a drink, Jocelyn? <laughs> okay. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, just drink it in. And we're going to do um, one of the live streams we do this um, as we go. Actually, every one of them besides tonight, uh, we're going to look at scoring and we'll step into it. So the first thing you do is you go left to right and you tally the values using the tiles uh, to help you remember the score. So every flower, you get four points. So we have two flowers. 
and one of them is ours because we're the dealer we're east and number three is prevailing because that's what's up on the dice so they get score for having owner prevailing wind okay then we get four points for having an exposed pung of dragons we get eight points for the concealed pung anytime you you're when you're scoring your hand if you have a concealed pung you stack it like a pyramid and that indicates that it's concealed because you get more value for those so you get eight points for the, for the one bam concealed pung four points for simples they're less value and then you get eight points for the terminal so terminals you get eight points for a concealed pung the sim single tile you get nothing so if you have a bunch of single tiles or chows you get no score there they have no value so these are are the values of the components of our hand and it totals 32. all these numbers totaled up is 32. so that's your base score next you're going to look at the doubles so you're going to again go left to right looking at your components of your hand and you're going to put up a tile you're going to stand it up on on you know upward so that it's like a standing tile and that's going to count as your double to help you calculate how many doubles you get so we get a double for having our own and prevailing flower so we get two doubles for the flowers and incidentally if you want to follow along we're on page 30. so you get two doubles for the flowers you get a double for the dragon having a pung of dragons gives you a double then we're going to get also a double for one suit and honors i'm a little bit oh um three concealed pungs one the one five nine that's three concealed pungs you get a double for that you also get a double for being cleared to one suit and honors so that's why we have two for the flowers one for the dragon one for three concealed pungs and one for a half flush we're also ready to mahjong on a single limit hand i don't know what hand this is though uh one three five seven nine this is this is uh jade this is one of the jewel hands so this is jade and that is a i think that's a single limit is that a single limit hand no it's a double wait a minute i'm rusty bear with me a uh, jewel hand single limit Pung hand I think I said that ready to win on a single limit hand so you get six doubles is that right six doubles so we have 32 points for the base score with six doubles next you're going to look at the table and you're going to look for your your base value at 32 and then you're also going to look at how many doubles you have and that will give you your score 2048 is your score for this hand and then you're going to round it up to the nearest 10 to get your your final score so this hand is 2050 points so everybody else is going to score their hand and they're going to sub subtract their score from yours or whatever's above you you will subtract your score and then pay them the difference so you settle up that's how you score <clears throat> did i lose anybody <laughs> i know it's a lot okay we're gonna start to play now so you can see what it's like to play the game okay this is a hand that i played today and i won we won with angels you were with me i know you were with me okay do i have everybody we're going to switch over to the game now. Let's see. I need to close out of that. We're going to go back to that in a little bit. Okay. Can everybody see Mahjong? Mahjong time? Okay. Now, let me explain something. And we're, we're doing good. I was hoping to get through the presentation in one hour. So we're doing really good. We're going to be able to play probably maybe six games or so so it'll be a really good way for you to see what it's like to play 
Now, this is Mahjong time. They are programming right Patterson Mahjong right now. I don't know when it's going to be released, but I will let you know. So stay tuned to my channel and my Facebook group. And if you can, join my mailing list from my website, majlife.com. And that way you'll be notified when the release is out. So when the game is live, we're going to be able to play Red Patterson Mahjong at Mahjong time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you were lost when you had when when I said take a deep breath. <laughs> okay, that's all right. We're not going to do any scoring tonight. So now you can rest easy. We're just going to play the game, and I'm going to talk through it. Okay, and I'm going to explain the different hands because not everybody's going to have a book. I have my book right here. I'm going to need it too because I'm a little rusty and it's just been released in May and I have only played one time. So, uh, and then I practice online. Okay, so let me explain when you, if you want to practice here, you have never played at Mahjong time before, look for my email in the video description below. Send me an email. I will send you information so that you can get a 30 day VIP trial. When you play here, you can play in the, in the Mahjong school for free 24 seven. If you play with robots in the Mahjong school, you can play 24 seven. If you play with people, and I'll explain that in a little bit, it costs in-game currency called dragon chips. So when you are a member of Mahjong time, you get a set number of chips every day. With a VIP, you get 5,000 dragon chips a day to play with. When you run out of your chips, you got to wait till the next day when they replenish your chips. And when you win, you get more chips. So there's always going to be like a surplus. And you can incidentally buy chips as well with cash money. So you can see in the upper right corner, I have 156,479 dragon chips. So I can play whenever I want because I have a lot of chips. And I didn't win all those. I bought them because I, want, I didn't want to worry about how many chips I have. So I bought them. And I have a video that explains the money system and how to buy chips. You just go to the cashier. There's a little button up there. You can buy chips through clicking this button over here, buy chips. <coughs> so... When you enter a table that's being played with people, you have to ante up. And sometimes it's 250 chips, sometimes it's 500, sometimes it's 1,000. And whoever wins, wins the chips. And we'll talk more about that. Or you can watch a video that explains the different memberships and the perks that come along with it. And there's some uh, relation to the chips that, go, that get involved there. Uh, that amount of chips is impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now, at Mahjong time, <clears throat> there are five ways to play. You can play the National Mahjong League rules, which is what most of us play, but you could also play Hong Kong Mahjong, Taiwanese, um, uh, and uh, Mahjong competition rules, and Richie Mahjong. Tonight, and, and what I'm going to recommend if you want to practice, you can play at the Hong Kong Mahjong tables. But there are some things you've got to know first. Number one, there are there's no Charleston. So there will be no Charleston. That's part of the Wright-Patterson game. So we're going to play at a Hong Kong Mahjong table because a lot of the hands, at least I think it's about half of them, are in our, our actual Wright Patterson Mahjong hands. So some of the hands are actual valid Hong Kong Mahjong hands. There's similarities there, but some of them are not. Therefore, you're going to play up until your winning tile. And you're just going to know, okay, that's my winning tile, so I won. You're not going to be able to click Mahjong because if it's a Wright Patterson hand, they're not programmed in here yet. But you can still play because the game mechanics are the same. You pick and discard. You exchange for Kongs. You exchange for flowers. That's part of the game. So when you play here to practice your decision making on building your hand, picking a hand, building a hand, all those sorts of decision making practice can be done right now. 
just know that you won't have the Charleston to play yet. And you're going to play up until your winning tile. But everything else is going to be the same. It's going to be supported by the current Hong Kong Mahjong program. So I'm going to go back to the home so you can see what it looks like when you join. So when you first launch into the game, this is what it looks like. Um, you have this crazy hand here. Uh, I'm going to actually turn it off. Let's see here. Game settings. Let's see, where's that hand? Where's the hand? I thought you could disable, disable the hand. Dynamic action. Activate. Huh. All right, we'll move on. I don't know where it is. Okay, anyway, ignore the hand as best you can. Okay, so when you land on this opening screen, you're going to click games and it's at the very top navigation under your picture. You have home, then games. You're going to click games. From there, if you want to practice with robots, you're going to click Mahjong School. It's underneath that navigation. It's a sub navigation. Click Mahjong School. Then you're going to pick the style and this is where you pick Hong Kong. Hong Kong Mahjong. That's what you want to pick. All right, now, Hong Kong Mahjong is one of, it's probably the easiest version to play. And there, there are very few boundaries. You have total freedom other than you have to have four blocks and a pair. The blocks can be three of, uh, three of a kind, four of a kind, or a chow, three in a sequence. Other than that, it can be anything you want. So it's, it's a very fast paced game. In order to give yourself time to play the harder hands in Wright Patterson Mahjong, I recommend a three point table to give you time. Otherwise the robots are gonna beat you. If you're playing a random wall, they're gonna be punging and conging all the tiles quickly. And I have found that by playing with like for example, HK level three, that you have time to build your hand because they have to gather score as well in order to qualify to win. So we're gonna play at this HK level three and that way it'll give us time to build a Wright Patterson hand. And it's not as easy as just the Hong Kong Mahjong hands. So does that make sense? Does anybody have a question about that? If you're going to play at, at um, and practice decision making, play at one of the higher level tables, three, four, five, uh, one of those. And then if you don't care, just play at the ra random wall, it's fine. The thing about these three, four, five, these pointed tables is you're going to get the same tiles with every deal. But you can still practice by picking different ways to play that hand out. And we'll, I'll, I'll kind of show you an example. We're going to play this one two times so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and on the far right, we're going to click join. All right, everybody with me? Okay, uh, there we go. All right, you can see we're playing with robots and they're going to deal the tiles. Uh, let's see here. You know what? I need to exit and come back real quick because you can't hear. Hold on. We're going to come right back. Let's see here. Oh, we're going to leave and come back because I have my sound turned off. Okay. There's a bit of a delay there. Okay. Here we go. We're going to try again. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. So this is the same table, same deal. All right, now you can see that we have two flowers or three flowers. Look at that, three flowers and we're the dealer. We're in East position. So already we have two of our own flowers. So we already have eight points. Also, we have a number three flower. If you look across from us, you see where the dark tiles are? That's the flower wall. 
and it's in front of the third player, which is West, and we have their flower. So we already have 12 points. Three times four, you get four points for every valuable flower. We have two of our own and one of prevailing, which is where the flower wall is. We're player one, the player to the right is player two, the player across from us is player three, and we have a three flower, two ones and a three. So we have 12 points already. So we wanna win, because we're gonna have a really nice hand right here. Okay, so what we have here, I'm gonna click this little double arrow button and it will sort my tiles for me. We have three, or sorry, four, six, nine in bams, three, four, seven, eight in cracks, one, six, nine in dots, a red dragon, and a pung of east winds. So we can play all kinds of hands here. We have flexibility in which one we play. And with this one, I'm going to recommend that we play a one suit in honor hands. Maybe we could play something that will use the winds and one of the suits. And then we're going to do this hand again where we're going to play a higher point hand just to show you that you can reuse the same tiles and have a totally different outcome. So we're supposed to discard. <clears throat> and I'm thinking because we have four uh, cracks, we should hold on to all the winds and dragons we get and cracks. At the moment, we have one, two, three, four cracks, and we have a red dragon and three east. So that would be um, eight tiles. Anytime you have seven or more tiles that can be used in a particular category or for a particular hand, go for it. That's more, that's more than half your hand. So that's a really good guideline to remember if you're at a decision point. So we're going to let, let's say, we'll let the dots go first. And we're One just going to, we're going to hoard cracks and honors. Remember, One honors bamboo. are wins, dragons, ones, and nines. But the one nine in cracks, those are the ones Two we're going to focus on because we want to get to one suit in honors, also called a half flesh. One so bamboo. all we're going to do is gather. We're just going to gather. There's another east, and we're going to be prompted to Kong, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to let it go for the moment. Six so we're going to let that six dot go. Kong. And we may not use the, this Kong of East. If that makes you cringe, write hashtag cringe. Um, just Three because I want to prove a point in this particular hand. We're going to focus on one Born suit bamboo. and honor. So these Easts might go later. There's a dragon. We're going to keep it because any combination of winds and dragons are honors, no matter what they are. You just want to gather all Nine of them dots. that you can get your hands on. Because our goal here is to get to Five one bamboos. suit with winds and dragons. That's the goal. Five Once bamboos. we get there, then we can dig into what hand we're going to play. Um, and bamboos. incidentally, if you have a booklet, we're on page 17 and 18. And we really don't have to even look at the hands yet because we still need to gather. Now we have a pair. So more likely than not, we're going to play in the pair Born category, bamboos. pair hands, because now we have a pair over there. One character. Uh, and even some of the sequence hands, you have to have a pair. So we could still maybe play a sequence hand, but we're just going to keep gathering. We still two have two characters. tiles to get, get rid of. Now, if you look at these hands, most of them are concealed. We could technically chow. But I wouldn't do that because we don't even know what hand we're playing. So we're going to pass. And we're just going to keep gathering. Six bamboos. So this nine bam pair is going to go. Five characters. We have simples. Three, four, seven, eight. One of the hands I was thinking about is Betty. Betty is number 10. And it's three pairs in one suit of simples. Five characters. With seven odd honors and one honor paired. Okay, so we're playing a concealed hand. That is a concealed hand, so we can't take Eight that. Bamboos. But we need a white dragon in here, and then we need the other wins. Four dots. We can let two of these east go, and we can use one of the pairs, east, east, because you got to have at least one of these honors paired. Two dots. That's seven odd honors. 
one of each huh. of the winds and dragons and then any one of Nine those pairs dots. that is called uh seven odd honors with one honor pair six bamboos i see that peggy is saying should the six dot pun seven be dots. stacked no it the stacking happens pun. when you score or if it's a one dot. kong that is upgraded or a pung upgraded to a kong uh, that Five is a, a time when you're going to stack. But an exposed pung is going to be flat on the table. When you Seven score, bamboos. you're going to stack Kong. them if it's concealed. So there's an example of a Kong. Two dots. Um, and those are shown stacked like that because the Kong is technically Nine three tiles bamboos. because you've got to have... 14 tiles to make up your winning hand. So Red it's kind right of an hand. extra tile. That's why they stack it to make it look like it's three tiles. Three characters. I know it's a little complicated, but all right, we're going to keep going here. Um, I'm just wondering if there's a pung hand that we could have maybe One played. Bamboo. I'm still learning the hands. Okay, there's another pair. If I weren't, you know, trying to make a point with one suit and honors, I would probably switch to. Um, an honor hand with that pair in there, but we're going to let this nine bam go. When we come nine back bamboos. and play this again, we're going to play Heavenly Twins. Or maybe there's another hand called, uh, let's Seven see, with that East, we maybe could try for Seven Heavenly or e Windy Gates is another hand we can try. And I'll explain that too in a little bit. Okay, there's a keeper finally. Nine so now we have two, three, four, seven, eight. We've got our green dragon, eight a pair dots. of red dragons. So we hmm. have extra pairs Nine in here dots. that we're not going to use, but we're going to keep gathering. Two bamboos. We're trying for Betty. Three pairs in one suit, no terminals, so no ones Six and nines. Bamboos. We've got to have two through eight paired up, three of them. Three dots. And then we need red, white, and green dragon, hmm. one of each of the wins, and green then dragon. any honor paired. Okay, so there's a one. We'll keep it. Let's let the east go now. East wind. Now that we have that one, we might be able to play dragon lineup number 13. Five dots. This is a sequence of one to nine in one suit, one tile pair, two through eight. We got a pair of threes. And then one of each of the dragons with any Sound dragon wind. paired. That's dragon lineup. So, of course, Two we'll bamboos. have to ditch the east wind pung here, but that's another possibility. Since we're Red concealed, dragon. we can stay flexible. We're going to pass. Four dots. We're looking at either Betty or Dragon lineup right Four now. Four dots. Number 10 or number 13. There's a seven. Now we have another pair in here. So I would ditch East wind. the dragon lineup hand, and I would focus on Betty. Four characters. We have two of three pair already in our hand. One bamboo. Now, there are no white dragons out, and there, west wind. there goes a west. We need the winds. That's what the One kicker dot. is at the moment. We need more honors. But we're building our pairs Six of bamboos. simples right now. Three dots. So we're looking for three pairs in one suit with seven three odd characters. honors, which is one of each of the winds and dragons. We're going to pass. We need the winds. We need news. We don't have seven news dots. yet. So we need a white dragon, north, west, and south. Green now, if dragon. you look at the wall in front of us, you see the ones three that bamboos. are dark. Those are the flower. That's the flower wall. We don't get a pick into that. Our tiles could be in there. Those are, are basically dead to us unless we draw flowers or Kong. So we only have about two more picks left. And we still have one, two, three, four discards. So we will not be able to win this hand. We don't have enough picks. Five characters. So we're basically playing defense Eight at this characters. point. Because we have too many discards. Four dots. There's three... Uh, Hopefully, yeah, that's a good discard. Three bamboo. Let's see here. I think someone threw a one crack. Oh, the last pick is coming up. Nine bamboos. Okay. So there's one more discard. One dot. So let's see. <clears throat> We're going to quickly just look at everybody's hand. 
because uh, there are going to be a couple of them are ready to win. And you'll be able to see why we couldn't win. Here we have a player with all pung, all pung. They needed, they have a pung of north, then they have three and eight punged and a pair in their hand, two pair. They were ready to win on a six or a nine. Four pungs or pair, fun, four pungs or chows in a pair, and you can win. So they were ready to win with that Hong Kong game. This player has junk, but this player is also ready to win. Uh, no, 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 they're not ready to win. They're ready to pung, but they still have a discard here. Okay, so we're going to play again, and this time we're going to play outside of the pair and sequence because I want you to see that we can get clo close or maybe even win by practicing here. So again, there's no Charleston. We have the same tiles we did last time. Now this time, I want to let you know about a hand in the number category. This is page 22 if you happen to have the book in front of you. And we could maybe play a hand called Eleanor. Eleanor is three different numbers, no terminals. It's got to be simples, two through eight, punged in each suit. So you have to have each suit represented, bams, cracks, dots. You get a pung of east winds and a pair of red dragons. That's Eleanor. And that is a double limit pung hand. So you can, you can claim a discard to help you with your hand. And I just want to show you what it looks like in the book. Do you see um, in the margin here where it says double and P? That's the limit, and it tells you that you can pung or call for a discard. If you don't have your book already and you want to learn this game, you're going to need to buy your own book. All right, so we're going to maybe play Eleanor. Um, and I also think that we should hold on to one of the suits to start because we might also be able to play a hand called Windy Gates. Windy Gates is number 42. This is on page 21. And this can be played concealed for double value or you can pung and it'll be a single value. So if you pung, uh, and expose your hand, it's going to be a lower value. But this is called Windy Gates 111 or 999, or I'm sorry, 111 with a sequence of 2 through 9, or 999 with a sequence of 1 through 8, with a pung of your own or prevailing wind. We have a pung of East, and we are the dealer. So that is our wind. That's why you want to know who is prevailing, who has the flower wall in front of them prevailing for this hand is south so we're east and we have a pung of our own wind so that's going to be valuable for us so if as east we win we get paid double east gets paid double for winning but if you lose you also pay double so let's see what happens we could play windy gates we could play eleanor we could also maybe play Heavenly Twins, which I saw coming in with the last time, uh, the last hand. We started pairing up the Red Dragon, and I think maybe even the ones and nines we could keep to see if maybe we could play Heavenly Twins, which is seven pairs of Terminals, Dragons, and Winds, any combination, including Kongs, by the way. Okay. Yep, you need to get the book. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start by discarding, and we're going to discard the six dot. Six dots. We're going to keep the nine One. bam One because bam, bam. We, we might be able to play an honor hand, which is going to be a higher value Two hand. Bamboos. Uh, Kathleen says, are there many wall games in WP? Um, not One necessarily, bamboo. but even if there are wall games, um, you still get to score your hand. So even if you don't win and there's a wall game, you still could be paid for your effort. Eight dots. Uh, let's see. Uh, when you are pay playing with real Wright bamboos. Patterson competitors, um, these are programmed Three for Hong bamboos. Kong Mahjong. Yeah, that's true. So really, this is just to practice decision Four making. Bamboos. We're really not aiming to win per se because the hands are not programmed in here. We're just gonna practice decision-making 
up to the winning tile. And then we're going to give ourselves a pat on our back if we win. But we won't be able to click Mahjong for some of the hands. So there's a dragon. We're going to keep it because we might be able to use that if we play a hand of honors, which are ones, nines, wins, and dragons. So let's keep the one and nine, and we're going to let the four bam go. Four bamboos. Okay, is everybody with me here? Is there anybody Five in chat bamboos. right now who already knows how to play Wright Patterson Mahjong? Five I know bamboos. Kathleen knows a little bit. I know Marsha's been studying Five a little bit. Bamboos. All right, that is a pair. So we have a three crack pair. I don't think Eleanor's going to work here because we're give, get, giving up our our Six simples bamboos. and we don't have uh, dots or bams now i would One let character. eleanor go at this point and i would probably either play betty like we played last time Two or characters. i would play a hand of honors we're gonna pass there's a nine bam guess what it's a pair so now that we have a pair of nine bams and these dragons and the wind there east i would Horde, ones, nines, wins, and dragons, and play a hand of honors. So we're now going to let go of Eight the cracks, characters. the simples. We're going to hoard ones, nines, wins, and dragons. And we really don't need to look at the book or figure out what hand we're Eight playing dollars. until we run out of the simples. Five we're just going to gather. So you really don't have to pick a hand until you get to a place where you then have to make a decision. So any simple tile, two eight through eight, bamboos. we're going to discard. When we run out of those tiles, then we'll look at the book and figure no out nuts. what we're going to play. Until then, we're just going to hoard honors and, term, honors and terminals. The winds, dragons, and ones two and nines. Nuts. Now, if one of our tiles is discarded, Pun. we'll have to make a decision and maybe Red look at dragon. the book and pick a hand. So let's just see how this goes. Six bamboos. Now we've switched to a higher point hand, so it's going to take longer to build. Seven dots. The higher oh. value your hand, the longer it'll take you to build. Six If characters. you're playing a single limit oh. hand, you're probably going to win quicker. Two dots. If you're playing a double limit, it's a little more difficult, so it'll take a little longer to build. If you're playing a triple limit, that's going to take a long Five time to build. Dots. If everybody at the table is playing for Seven a high bamboos. point hand, it could be a cool. wall game because you're all building a complex Eight hand. Characters. So keep that in mind as you're playing. Five dots. One nice thing I see here is nobody else has honors out. They're all simples. That could be good, Seven but characters. they could they could end up exposing honors and terminals later. East wind. Now that we have a pung in here. Uh, we, I would probably switch to something called Heavenly Hash. Heavenly Hash is four pungs of honors, wins, dragons, and terminals. It's a single limit pung hand, number 70. Um, now, we could Kong that. Let me Kong it so you see, can see what happens. We're going to click Kong, and the game is going to expose four tiles, and then it's going to give us a flower pick. So we're going to get a tile from those dark tiles. That's the flower wall or the, the Kong wall, also called the dead wall um, or ghost wall. It's a ghost hand. It's made up of seven or 14 tiles, which is the equivalent of a winning hand. That's why it's called a, a ghost wall or um, there are several names for it. Kong box is another name for it in uh, Richie Mahjong. So anyhow, we're going to go ahead and click Kong. Kong. And we get a, a, another tile. And of course, now we discard. So we have pairs in here, but there's no hand with a Kong of East and two pairs of simples. We're already committing to honors. So we need to let these pairs go as pretty as they are. They, they don't fit characters. for Wright Patterson Mahjong. Three characters. Um, unless we're playing for score alone, which is also something that you can do. And we'll talk about that in a bit. One bamboo. If you know you can't win, you can still pung for score. Okay, so we don't we don't want an eight. We want ones and nines. Eight characters. I'm hoping we'll draw that the dragons here. 
Seven characters. And of course, we still need the one nine and dots. One nine dot is out. So hopefully Five our tiles characters. are in the wall. Two characters. That's going to prompt us for a chow, but we don't want a chow. Oh, eight dot. We don't want eight that. Eight dots. Two bamboos. Let me see here. There Six is... bamboos. Oh, no. Okay, never mind. Nine dots. So we're playing Heavenly Hash right now. Okay, that's a keeper. It's a different suit, but that's okay. Ones and nines are part of honors in this case. So we're going to keep that one. Four characters. So we're getting there. We only have two simples to get rid of. Five dots. And we have lots of picks left. We have Three uh, at least, let's see, we have five more picks. Green dragon. Okay, two bam we don't want. Two bamboo. We have five picks and two, or really three discards. Maybe four discards. So we're kind of running out of picks here. One dot. But that's okay. It's it's the effort, the journey four is what dots. we're after here. You know, Pun. playing the game, making three decisions, dots. looking at the book, Pun. finding your category, finding your hand. That's the purpose Red of dragon. this practice. It's not necessarily to win, although it is nice if you win, but Seven the whole characters. journey in and of itself is what we're Four after characters. Uh, as we're practicing online. One bamboo. So if you don't win, don't One feel dragon. bad. Enjoy the journey. Pun. There's a lot that can be learned just through the decision South making wind. alone. And it's entertaining. One dot. Okay, so our our options are kind of dwindling Six here. There, uh, yeah, we don't need this three dot. Three are out, so that is three safe. Three dots. And we have one, two, about three more picks. Three characters. So we will not win this game. Um, and we're not going to worry about score, so we're not going to just win for score. We'll cover that Seven in another dots. in another Gone. live stream later this Five month. Five dots. Because you can do that. That is an Green option. Dragon. You will not be able to Mahjong, but you will be able to rack up some score. I think we should throw away the three crowns. Three characters. Hopefully that's not a winning tile. There were two One out. Character. So right now we're just trying not to throw the winning tile to anybody. Four bamboos. All right. And then uh, let's see here. Okay, five crack, three are out, so let's throw that. Five now, characters. somebody could still chow on that, but we're playing at a three-point table, so Eight they characters. will likely not chow. There's no value in chows, unless you're all in one suit or Four something dots. like that. Con. Okay, so that's a wall game. And let's just quickly look and see. Well, no, we won't look. We'll just stop. Okay, so I'm going to exit this table. And we're going to join a five-point table. And that way we can have um, longer to build a hand. And we can also try to get some different tiles to see what we have to work with. So let's go ahead and play at this five-point table. Or let's see, we played at the three-point. Let's go ahead and do the four-point. Does anybody have any questions? All right, so we're going to play again. And um, at Mahjong time, you can create a custom table and play with your friends and seat them. So I can show you how to do that maybe with the next game. So if you want to practice online just with your friends, I'll show you how you can do that. Okay, now look at this. One suit and honors. I don't even know what hand we're going to play. I really don't care. All I know is we have a really good start to one suit or maybe one suit with either wins or dragons. So I'm going to discard the offsuit tiles and focus on dots. Maybe wins or dragons. We'll see. But we're going to play probably something on the single, on the pairs and sequence hands. And these are going to be, if you have a book, 
page 17 and 18, pairs or sequences, we might be able to do dragon gates, like I, I showed you windy gates before, where you had a Kong of your own or prevailing wind. Here, dragon gates is going to be 111 or 999 with a sequence of two through eight and any simple paired. 111 or 999 with a sequence of two through eight with any simple paired with the corresponding dragon. The white dragon goes with dots. Remember, white is pearl. Pearl is round like the dot. So white dragons correspond to dots. That incidentally is number 41 on page 21. Okay, so let's discard the six crack. Six characters. And we are going to hoard dots. We might even be Four able bamboos. to get to a one suit hand, which is a lot of fun. Four bamboos. One of my favorite hands is called Peng Chow. And that Two incidentally bamboos. is a Hong Kong Mahjong hand. So we, we could even win with that particular hand because it's a Hong Kong Mahjong hand. Four bamboos. Four blocks and a pair, Peng Chow. That qualifies for Four Hong characters. Kong Mahjong. So I hope all this is making sense to you. Six bamboos. Please write any questions hmm. that you have in chat. And then after the live stream, you can always send me a, a question by email. Oh, look, we've got another pair there. Uh, let's discard the eight man. Eight okay, bamboos. now I'm going to look at the book and see if there's something we could do with um, what's Five called characters. opposite honors. Opposite Five honors characters. are when you have a pung of winds and a pair of dragons or the opposite of that a pung of winds and a pair of dragons that's called opposite honors there may be a hand we could play for that now here we're being prompted to pung and technically we could pung let's see we are east and prevailing is north so we have a pair of south um, we could technically pung that and play Dragon Gates. We're missing a four dot and an eight dot, so it would be very risky to do that. I'm going to pass because it would be very risky. We would be exposing ourselves and we wouldn't be able to play any other concealed hand. I'd rather have the flexibility because there are lots of concealed hands we could play. If we were to pung that, we would be committing. Okay, here we have a two, so we fill the gap. We did need a two. We need a four and an eight. If we get a four or eight, I might pung that one and even the white dragon and play dragon gates. Depending North if we can wind. get at least one more single covered. If you need lots of singles in a pung hand, Seven you characters. better have them in your hand, at least with one remaining to wait for. That's okay, three but dots. if you have to wait for multiple singles or three characters, like here, we need a pung. four dot and an eight dot, that's two singles One that dot. we're lacking. I would not commit to a pung hand, and that's what we're where we're at right now. Um, because we don't have the four or eight, I would not call that tile, even though technically we could. But we would be either committing to dragon gates or a hand of honors where we'd have to discard all the two through eight. And then the other option would be to play for score where you just pung and not win and then score your hand and get paid when you settle up with the other losers. <laughs> so in this case, we're gonna pass. Does that make sense? Is that making sense to you guys? Nine dots. The decision making there as to whether or not to call two a tile. Dots. I hope that's not too overwhelming. Okay, we're, we're playing concealed. And there's a dot. We're going to let the Souths go because we don't have any other wins. Now, wins. here we have three pair, the one dot, five dot, and the Six seven characters. dot. So I would probably switch to a pair hand. We could play Snowflake. Dots. Snowflake is six pairs of dots with a pair of white dragons. We're going to pass. Okay, Marsha is asking, is prevailing wind the one with the Seven dark flower characters. wall? Yes, that is correct. Two Where characters. the dark tiles are, that's the prevailing. Now, we're the dealer, so the break in the wall kind of went into our own rack. Um, so the prevailing wall is north. 
I believe. Okay, we're going to pass. There's a way, it depends on where the wall Seven was broken, and I'm rusty here. So if anybody plays Wright Patterson, you'll Eight have to correct me if East is prevailing, but pardon me, I think North is prevailing. Five you fingers. have the, those Pong. in front of e East could be prevailing. Eight dots. If so, would Pong. there be double score Four for a dots. Pung or Kong of East? If you lose, yes, you can get score for that. However, if you are playing a hand where you are required to have your own or prevailing wind, you need to know who is prevailing. Um, and I think it was, I think it is north because they had to borrow, uh, they had to go back to get tiles from us. I think that's when they do not lose the prevailing position. If you have, if you go into the player's rack to your left, I believe that's where you lose the prevailing position. And there's technically no benefit to being prevailing. You just want to know who is prevailing. Um, okay, so we're going to pass. There's an east, but at this point, I want to keep all of our dots. I'm going to let the east go. We're going to play Snowflake. East wind. Snowflake is six Seven pairs of dots moves. with a pair of white dragons. And incidentally, the crack-like hand is called Valentine. Same hand, Seven dots. but it's with cracks and red dragons. And then the, the bam hand with green dragons is called Shamrock. But it's basically the same hand. Snowflake, Valentine, and Shamrock. Okay, we're gonna pass. Oh, eight crack. Eight characters. We're looking for dots. We have a nice hmm. big wall. We have a, a potential to win this one. Nine dots. A one bam. One bamboo. Kong. Oh, there's a Kong of ones. That's okay by East us. Wind. Four dots. Okay, we need dots. We'll pass. We're playing concealed. This is a concealed hand. Nine characters. Concealed hand. Let Pump. me show it to you here. South wind. Uh, there it is. Second hand down. Five characters. Single limit. Concealed hand. It has a C. That means concealed. That South means you have wind. to draw everything yourself. But when you're ready to win, you can Eight mahjong. Bamboos. Okay, so now we need a nine dot, a two or a three, one character. and we'll be ready to win. <gasps> we got a three! Okay, now there's one two dot and one nine dot out. Because the player across from us has ones and nines, I'm going to let the nine go because they may be trying for a hand of honors. So you, you want to look at what everybody has exposed to help you make a decision and optimize your potential to win. We're gonna let the nine dot go. Nine dots. Now, that's not to say that the other two players could have a two dot, but the Seven likelihood characters. would be that we'll see a two dot, either in the wall or being discarded. We got a Mahjong, look! We've got a seven pair hand. That's a Hong Kong Mahjong hand. And in this case, it's Snowflake. Mahjong! Woohoo! We got a winner! And this is a nice hand, by the way, in Hong Kong Mahjong. Seven pair, one suit in honors, self draw last tile. We got a nice hand, both in Hong Kong Mahjong and Wright Patterson. We got Snowflake! Okay, let's see. Two dot and there it is. Yep, we got a winner. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna close. So you can win some of the hands. Now, um, let's see here. Um, for those of you who are comfortable using a spreadsheet with filters. I have documented all the hands in the book into a spreadsheet. 
an Excel spreadsheet and it will convert to the program on a Mac. I forget the name of it. Is it numbers or something like that? So this spreadsheet has all the hands and I documented all the patterns. So you can use the filters for whatever hand you have. Well, here, let me show it to you. Let's see if it comes up. Hold on, I'm gonna wait for it to catch up. There it is. Okay, so I programmed or documented all of the hands. So we have the hand number in this first column. Let me make it bigger. So the first column is the hand number. The second column is the name of the hand. The third column is the category that it's in. The fourth column is another category that it could cross over into. So you could play one of two categories in some cases. Whether it's a pung hand or a concealed hand, whether it's single, double, or triple limit, and then we have flush and half flush, and then also we have the other patterns that your hand could qualify for. And you can use these to filter, to figure out what hands you could possibly play. So I'm gonna show you how you could use this if you're comfortable with it. Let me know and I'll, I'll give you a link to it. So we're gonna go ahead and do another table here and I'll show you how you can use that to help you find hands to play. So we're gonna do <clears throat> a five point table. Spreadsheets are fun. Databases like access, yes. Okay, Evelyn, you would enjoy it then. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna look at what hand we're dealt and then we're gonna look at the pattern in the hand. Then we're gonna look at that spreadsheet and we're gonna filter it based on the tiles we have so that we can narrow down a category or maybe even a hand that we can play. All right, so look what we have here. We have two BAM, nine BAM, one four eight in cracks, one nine nine in dots. So we have a pair of nines. We also have a red dragon, pair of dragons, east, south, west. So we have terminals, winds, and dragons. So I'm gonna pull up the spreadsheet and I am going to come over here to the far right. And this is got the far left two columns locked in place. So you'll always be able to see the hands anyway. I wonder um, if we should maybe open up the category. I'm gonna unfreeze. Okay, so we're gonna lock in the category, the assigned category, and we're gonna go over here. Here are the winds and dragons. We don't quite have news. Uh, we have winds, so I'm gonna select where there's an X. We have dragons, so I'm gonna remove blanks. Um, and then we do have some, I think we'll leave it there, okay? Winds and dragons. Look at all the hands we could play. We could pay, there are a couple hands in pairs, sequences, novelty, numbers, honors, and Chinese tea. So let's just leave that there. We'll go back to the hand and let's focus on an honor hand. We're gonna play a hand of honors, okay? We're gonna let the little numbers go. Let's let the two bam go. Now, incidentally, you see where the flower wall is? Who can tell me who is prevailing? Let me query you, we'll quiz you. Who's prevailing? Put it in chat. I'm east, south is to my right, west is across from me, north is to my left. Who is prevailing? East, south, west, north, eat soup with nuts. Does anybody know who's prevailing here? Evelyn got it. Good, Jocelyn, Marsha, good job, Peg. 
Excellent. Well done. Yes, south. South is prevailing. We're in east seat. South is prevailing. Look at our flowers. Can you see the flowers? We have a number two and a number one flower. Do we get score for those? If we don't mahjong, will we get to get score for that? Yes or no? You all got it. Yep. Just so we can move on. Yes. The answer is yes. Those two tiles have value if we don't win. Okay. We're going to discard this two bam. Two bamboos. Yes. Jocelyn got it. Six Peg bamboos. got it. There we go. I think you guys understand the flowers. You understand where prevailing is. Is this feeling okay? Four is anybody bamboos. feeling overwhelmed? Come and on. don't be embarrassed if you feel overwhelmed. Six characters. Put an O in chat if you're a little overwhelmed. One character. Okay, guess what? That's a keeper. That's a one. So we need to keep that. Four Ones and nines. Characters. Yeah, there is a bit of a delay. One dot. There is a delay. Okay, we're playing one. a concealed hand. Two dots. Okay, now this one dot here, we may or may not Two be able characters. to use that. We might be able to play a hand called Eight Angels. Characters. Angels is a hand of honors. We are on pages. Three dots. We are on pages 21 and 24. No, no, no. Nine dots. 25 and 26. Now, we only have two pair. I would not call that nine because we only have two pair. If we have three or four pair, I would probably Kong it. But here, we're going to pass because we only have two pair. Okay, we do have Five someone characters. feeling a bit overwhelmed. Scoring huh. is overwhelming. Yes, that is, um, it, it takes a little getting used to, but I hope um, in the next time we play next week, we'll look at, scoring and will practice so we're gonna discard this nine uh 6 p.m now six we have all honors all winds nine dragons bamboos. ones and nines that's all honors we have three pair here but i think we have the potential for heavenly twins or a hand called angels which are double limit hands we could maybe pung that and play a hand called Terms of Honors. And that's a, the, that has pairs. So I don't think we should call that. Number 77 is Terms of Honors, three pairs of terminals, and then seven odd honors and one honor paired. That's where you need one of each Wind and Dragon and one of those paired. I think we should wait and we're gonna let it go. Good job, characters. Jingles. All right, so we have, we're looking for ones, nines, wins, and dragons. We don't need simples. Seven dots. All the simples are going to go away. We're playing a big hand here, so it's likely going to take dots. us into the end game to gather. At some point, we may switch to Heavenly Hash, which is number Six 70. Bamboos. Four pungs and a pair of honors and terminals. Look it, we got a keeper in here. We have one in, we have almost seven odd honors and one paired north. We're very close to angels. I think we should try for angels. Angels is number 80. One and nine of each suit, one of each wind and dragon, and then any tile paired. I think we should try it. No norths are out yet. No nine cracks are out yet either. So... Let's discard the nine bam. Nine bamboos. Okay, so we have, we'll probably let that nine dot go because we have a pair of red, uh, white nine dragons. Bamboos. So we need a nine crack and a nine north. Characters. Nine crack Pung. and north. We're one away nine from a dots. double limit hand. Uh-oh. Someone just punged a nine crack. Two bamboos. So we're in a little bit of a sticky spot here. Four dots. There's only one more nine crack. We got it. Look at that. All right, now we're going to discard nine dot. 
And we are nine now dots. ready to win on angels. Number 80. Red dragon. One and nine of each suit. One of each of the winds and dragons. And one of any Red one dragon. of these tiles paired. We have a pair of white dragons. We're ready to win on a north. Two characters. Ready to win on a north. And this is a double limit hand. Five and dots. incidentally, this is also hmm. a Hong Kong Mahjong Six hand. Dots. So we will get a prompt for Mahjong here. All right, let's discard the South. South wind. We're playing, this is a coveted hand in Asian versions. East wind. It's very difficult to get. Three characters. We're looking for a North wind. We need news. Seven dots. Oh, seven crack. Seven characters. Pung. We get another turn. North wind. There it is. Mahjong. Mahjong. Because Angels is a Hong Kong Mahjong hand, we could declare Mahjong on the Hong Kong Mahjong table. Let me just show you something really quick. So here we have honors only. Uh, now honors only, that includes terminals. I don't know if that's gonna work here. There's angels right there. Okay, there's another column here, right here. H-K-O-S, that stands for Hong Kong Old Style. That's the table that we're playing on. So while you're looking at this spreadsheet, 43% of the hands in Wright-Patterson qualify as a Hong Kong Mahjong hand. So 41 of the 92 hands you can actually win at Mahjong time right now. So if you're playing and you know what hand you're playing, you can filter by the hand. So like in this case, it's angels. And you can see that it's a Hong Kong Mahjong hand. And so we were able to actually Mahjong while playing Hong Kong or Red Patterson Mahjong. All right, so that's it. I think that's gonna do it for the live stream. I hope that you're inspired to continue with me on Wednesdays. Uh, let me go ahead and stop this and I will um, go back to the full webcam here. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed this live stream and that you enjoyed the presentation. I hope it wasn't too overwhelming. We're gonna do deep dives into the different categories as we do the nitty gritty Let's Play live streams on Wednesday nights, same time, same channel, and we'll play the different categories and focus on hands in those categories. And we'll answer questions about each of the hands so that you can learn the nuances of Wright-Patterson Mahjong. Okay, anybody who want, uh, let's see, I'm gonna add a link to where you, so that you can download the spreadsheet. So give me a little bit of time for YouTube to republish the video and I will update the handout with the corrections and also so that you can download the handout, which was the presentation. And then also you'll be able to download the spreadsheet. Okay, you're welcome. I, I hope that you enjoyed it. I sure did. I'm very excited to play Right, patterson Mahjong at Mahjong time. And I hope that you, even though we can't do the Charleston and you know technically we can't win some of the hands, you can still practice decision-making by playing here and playing up to the winning tile. And if you decide to play, oh, next week, we'll, I'll show you how to create a custom table. And maybe we'll even play with Wright Patterson people and I'll show you how to do it. And we'll have real people playing at the table with everyone playing Wright Patterson rules. And when you get to the place where you mahjong, maybe you'll, you'll be on Zoom so you can hear if somebody wins. You take a screenshot of that uh, particular hand and then you can score and help everybody score and, and whatnot. We'll practice doing that next time. And then of course you would play the game out um, or you could, uh, yeah, I would just play it out and then go again. And then just know you for many of the hands, I guess it would be um, 50, what was it? 
56 percent of the hands you wouldn't be able to actually win you would just stop when you get your winning tile and say mahjong uh let's see here do you want to chance zoom again i don't know if i want to chance zoom again that was pretty bad although what we could do is we could zoom and it could be uh, let's see, it could be private so that you would have to have a password to get in. But if those trolls figure out or f f go to my channel again, they'll know how to register. Or if they find me on Facebook, they'll know how to register and they could still bombard our, our event. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do that again. That was bad. That was not fun. But um, anyway, I think um, it was a lot of fun. And I hope that you're inspired to continue learning Wright-Patterson Mahjong. It is a really fun combination of Asian version, the Asian versions, and National Mahjong League versions. There's some crossover. And so uh, you'll have a little bit of a learning curve if you play either one. But it's a nice common ground. So I hope to see you again next week. Could send an email to known members. Maybe we might make that um, a perk for members only, I think, um, because you know what I could do is everybody could sign up to my mailing list. And if you're in my mailing list, Although the trolls could join my mailing list too, though. How would I know if they're a troll? I mean, that the, the two guys that came on, we didn't know who they were. Um, and I have, you know, 25,000 subscribers. So I don't know everybody personally. All right. That's going to do it for the live stream. We have two minutes to the top of the hour. Please join me again next Wednesday night, 6 p.m., 6 to 8. And we'll play more. Right, Patterson Mahjong, and each time we're going to start with a presentation, and I'm going to share hands so that if you don't have a book, you can see what it's like to build a hand and what the hands look like, and you can kind of watch the videos to study a little bit until you get your book. I will also put a link in the video description to where you can buy your own book. And incidentally, let me show you one more thing. I hope you stick with me here for a minute. Um, don't leave, but you're, you can find these links later, even if people left. I want to show you um, the different books that they have for sale, okay? This is the Wright-Patterson Mahjong. Uh, let's see, I want to make sure you can see it. Uh, hold on. There we go. Uh, Okay, can you guys see the Wright Patterson Mahjong webpage? This link right here will be in the video description, but it'll also be in the handout. If you scroll down, I want you to know there are errors and uh, clarifications in here. So when you get your book, make sure you go to their website and study the, the corrections and clarifications and make notes in your book. And I have these notes in that spreadsheet too, by the way. Down here are the different books that you can buy. Okay, I don't recommend any of these other books. I recommend either the green book. And if you want an example booklet, get the blue book. The blue book has pictures of the hands. Hold on, I can show you an example. Let's see here. Oh. Let's see. Where's my right person? Oh. Oh, wait. Is there a blue book in there? Oh, I don't have a blue book. 
I can't show you the blue book. It has pictures of tiles. Okay, so I would recommend that you get the green book and the blue book. I'm going to get one blue book. In a group, if, if you're playing with a group of people, only one of you really needs to have the blue book. You don't need to buy the blue book. It's extra. And also there are errors in there. And also the hands, sometimes people get stuck on what is displayed, but there's flexibility. So it's not written in stone, as it were. The displayed, it's an example of what the hand might look like, but some people get stuck on it and think that's the only way to play that hand. So it can be a little bit tricky if you're playing, if you're a beginner. So I highly recommend the green book for sure. Everybody should have their own green book. And then if you are a visual learner, you could get the blue book in addition. And it's a great reference if anybody questions a hand in the green book. You can go to the blue book, look it up for clarification. That's typically what it's used for. That's why it's called a visual aid. So those are the two books I recommend. <clears throat> the green book at a minimum. Okay. So in about 15 or let's say an hour, give it about an hour for me to update the links in the video description when we stop the live stream. Cause then YouTube has to do its YouTube thing and it'll be republished and then you'll be able to get to the video description where you can access the links. Thank you everybody for coming. Uh, I appreciate the moderators who helped. You're, you're indispensable. Thank you so much for being here to help moderate chat. And if you're new to the game, welcome. I hope you stick with us and join us again next Wednesday night, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. Same channel. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.